Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Before you can issue a paycheck to an employee, you must have the employee entered into Peachtree. We looked at the process of setting up payroll and entering the employee defaults back in Chapter 2. Now we will look at actually entering the individual employee records. To do this, select Maintain from the menu bar and then choose the Employees slash Sales Reps command. This invokes the Maintain Employees Sales Reps window where you can add new employees and edit employee information. Now at the top of the window, enter the ID you want to assign to the employee into the Employee ID field. Next, type the first name, middle initial, last name, and suffix into the fields provided. You can also input a nickname if desired. Next, you would then select whether the employee is an employee, a sales rep, or both by choosing the correct option button. If you select employee, the individual will appear on employee related reports and within the payroll entry window. If you select sales rep, they will appear in the sales rep lookup list and on accounts receivable sales rep reports. Paychecks cannot be issued to these individuals. Both allows for both aspects at once. To make an employee inactive after they have been entered, you can check the inactive checkbox. Next, click the general tab to view the basic information for the employee. Enter the address of the employee into the address fields. Then enter in the city, state, and zip into the three fields across from the label of the same name. You can enter the country of the employee into the country field. Also enter the social security number of the employee into the social security number field. You can assign the employee an employee type by using the Type Fields drop-down, or by simply entering whatever code you want to use into the box provided. This can then be used as a report filter, or as a way of selecting for which employees you wish to process paychecks when performing payroll entry later. You can also enter their phone numbers into the phone fields provided. You can then enter the employee's email address into the email fields. Now in Peachtree 2004 through 2010, under the Dates section, enter the date that the employee was hired, their last raise date, and their terminated date if applicable. You can also enter the birth date, gender, and rehired date into the fields starting in Peachtree 2009. Now in Peachtree 2011, these fields are found on the Additional Info tab with the exception of the last raise date. Now to enter employee beginning balances for accurate W-2 and payroll reporting, you can click the Employee Beginning Balances button. We will examine doing this in a later section of this chapter. At the bottom of this tab, in the Customizable field section, you can enter information into the fields available for the employee. Now, if you're using Peachtree 2011, you can next click the Additional Info tab to enter additional employee information. This includes emergency contact information, employment details, and demographic information. Next, click the Pay Info tab. Here you'll enter information about how you pay the employee. You select an option from the Pay Method dropdown. You can choose salary, hourly for hours per pay period, or hourly time ticket hours. Enter a dollar amount to bill customers by the hour for time recorded on time tickets into the hourly billing rate, or in this case, rate used to bill customer for Peachtree 2011. Next, select the frequency with which you pay your employees from the pay frequency dropdown. If you selected the hours, hours per pay period choice, you can enter the common number of hours the employee works in a payroll period. Next, you'll set the different pay levels available for this particular employee. Enter all of the different types of pay and the associated amounts that this employee can earn into the pay type list shown. 
you can click the Use Defaults checkbox to clear it if you do not want to use the standard general ledger payroll expense account for the employee. If you do that, you would then have to select a different general ledger account from the adjacent account field. After entering the types of pay and indicating the pay rates, you can check either of the two checkboxes at the bottom of this tab in order to indicate that the employee is eligible for health insurance and or receives their W-2 electronically if necessary. Next, click the Withholding Information tab to enter the employee's withholding information. Use the list to enter some of the basic payroll withholding information for the employee. Select the appropriate status of the employee using the drop-down for the filing status field for each payroll field name shown. Enter the number of allowances this employee is taking for the federal, state, and local tax lines under the allowances field. You can also enter any additional withholding amounts if employees elect to have additional money withheld from their paychecks under the additional withholding field. Some state tax formulas use the allowance and additional withholding fields for tax calculation purposes. Now in the same list, you enter the two-letter abbreviation for the state in which the employee lives in the state tax line under the state locality field. You can enter the locality name where the employee pays local income tax in the state locality field if needed. You can also check the Retirement Plan checkbox if the employee participates in a 401k or other type of retirement plan. This will place a check in the checkbox for the field of the same name in the employee's W-2 form. You can click the checkbox for Statutory Employee if the employee qualifies as a statutory employee according to the current IRS guidelines. Now, starting in 2009, you can enter the employee's specific vacation and sick time tracking by clicking the Vacation Sick Time tab within the Maintain Employees and Sales Reps window. Here you can change the specifics of this employee's vacation and sick time tracking if they differ from the defaults that you created when you initially created your payroll defaults. Now, if you wish to change the values for this employee, then first uncheck the this employee uses the company default settings checkbox for either the vacation tracking or sick time tracking sections. Then enter the employee's specific vacation and or sick time tracking into the area below the checkboxes. When you're finished, click the employee fields tab to enter deductions that are specific to the employee. Depending on the payroll fields you are using, you may have employees whose payroll deductions differ from the company-wide ones that you set up within your employee defaults. You can enter specific employee deductions on this tab. You uncheck the Use Defaults field if you do not want to use the standard payroll field information for this employee. You can then change the account field where the tax liability will be tracked. You can also change this account when a payroll check is entered. You can also clear the Calculated checkbox to enter a flat rate amount into the adjacent amount field. Otherwise, it will automatically calculate the payroll field using the calculation given. If you are calculating your deductions, select the name of the calculation used to calculate the deduction from the formula field. You can use the list drop-down as an incorrect tax name will cause errors during payroll entry. Enter the deduction or addition amount to apply a specific amount per pay period into the adjacent amount field as either a negative or positive value. Now for some fields, you can click the Adjust Arrow button to display the Calculate Adjusted Gross window. Here you can select the Use checkbox for fields that should be added or subtracted from the gross prior to calculating the tax if necessary. On the Company Fields tab, you can change the default employer company taxes. Uncheck the Use Defaults field if you do not want to use the standard payroll field information for the employee. Then you can make changes to the field. Under Liability, you can then select the Liability account to which the employer liability will be posted. 
Under the expense column, you can select the account to which the employer expenses incurred when paying an employee will be posted. You can also clear the calculated checkbox to not calculate this payroll field if needed. If you are calculating your deductions, select the name of the calculation used to calculate the deduction from the formula field. Use the list as an incorrect tax name will cause errors during payroll entry. Also, for some fields, you can click the Adjust Arrow button to display the Calculate Adjusted Gross window. And here you can select the Use checkbox for fields that should be added or subtracted from the gross prior to calculating the tax, if necessary. When you're finished entering your employee's information, simply click the Save button to save the employee record. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.